how much right does the state have to decide on what you get to put in your own body? Should the state have the self-control to, you know, many people say, well, look, we need a guiding hand of the state so that you don't harm yourself. Well, many people would also say that as adults, perhaps the state shouldn't be entering in um, personal decisions about what you do with your body. And perhaps the state's function is more to manage the outside realm and not the inside realm of, of who you are. And you know, different people um, take different positions on that, on that argument. We live in a, a sort of liberal Western democracy where freedom and the individual rights are meant to be you know, um, really protected. Um, but in reality, how true is that? And I think Ganja is one of the, the spaces where you know, people might say, is there a sort of infantilization of the population by the state trying to monitor how and what we put into our bodies? Um, you know, you see um, campaigns about don't drink too much, you know, telling people about the dangers of intoxication and seeing that as a health issue. Um, so the question emerges, well, why can't people see ganja as, as a health issue? Who owns Nas Who, who, who? Besides what I eat, I mean, so many people are overweight, sick, and they are, they are allowed to eat things that are not good for them. Sugar is the number one poison to the human body. And you have people advertising sugar-loaded drinks, and nobody in the society says, look here, this is why we have to cut off people's foot from diabetes. And, you know, cigarettes. Um, all of these things that people are not even aware through their advertising, how subliminally they are programmed to want these things, right? And this herb, this plant, that anybody could take a seed and grow. So to a human being asking, but this thing makes me feel better. I feel at peace, I feel happy, but I cannot have it. I will be arrested and put in jail with all kinds of people, with all kinds of issues, violent people, because I use this substance, this, this plant. Come on. I mean, as a human being, human rights and justice, all kind of, we're, we're reaching murder rate. We're reaching in terms of women getting raped and not even going to the police station because them not bother. But you will run down a man because you see him smoking his food. It makes you think the society crazy. It makes, it makes the society, we as a people, not making sense. It's interesting that in the United States, the main um, financial supporters are of those who are fighting against the decriminalization of um, marijuana or ganja are alcohol producers, um, pharmaceutical companies, um, insurance companies. And these are people who stand to lose a lot of money um, from ganja legalization or decriminalization. Um, the arguments that they, 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 they put out and the adverts that they put out in places like Colorado and California and New Mexico and different states in the United States have actually been wow. sold by the um, advertising authorities to be inaccurate, oh, right. that they're scaremongering, that they're using information that's actually not true. So it's not that these um, people who are financing the anti-legalization movement have hard facts to back up their case because what's happening is now that more research is being done into to ganja all of a sudden that it's being seen as a more therapeutic medicinal and, and social type of um, intoxicant that is not as harmful as previously stated. Criminalization of ganja, the legalization of ganja is not going to fix the problems of drug abuse but it can fix the problems of violent and socially unjust consequences of ganja prohibition because the reality is no matter what you do, ganja is here to stay. It's not simply going to disappear. And I think that returns me back to this idea that management is more important than morality. Um, it's more important for us to manage the problem than moralise about the problem. And once we become, become managers of the problem, we can start doing things like taking profits um, from the ganja pro um, 
economy, we can think about regulating it, we can think about the legal system. You know, grandeur prohibition leads to violence, it leads to corruption and it leads to crime. It speaks to something that we use in anthropology called the coloniality of power. And the coloniality of power is how do certain systems set up in the colonial period, so certain systems that were unjust and unequal, how do they extend into the present and how do they still have a, uh, an effect and an impact on people's lives? And I think the prohibition of ganja um, in Trinidad and its criminalisation, whatever you know, the elites and the, the, the politicians might say, is an extension of this kind of inequality. It demonstrates the coloniality of power because it's still a particular type of body and a colour of body and a certain age group who suffers the consequences of the criminalisation. So I would suggest to any of our leaders you know, listening to this um, programme today that if they want to really make a fairer society, make a better society, make a more just society, that some of the things they should think about include the decriminalisation or the legalisation of ganja. We have demonised ganja for so long. You know, it's like a mindset and it's a mantra and it's really about education and it's really because of the education system which says learn that. You don't need to understand the concept, just learn it, regurgitate it. We do not question as a society because we, I mean, the foundation of the society was a hierarchy and we have never really relinquished that idea that somebody's in charge. If it's not the PNM, it's the UNC, the PP. We don't understand that we are in charge. You know, we are the people. This is what a democracy means. 41 people cannot dictate the pace of 1.3 million. You know, we have to understand that equation. The other half of the equation is that slave mentality that I know it's right to legalize. You know it's right to legalize. But we're afraid. We're afraid to whip.